Hello, physics experts. Newland here. Let's talk about how we can use Desmos to generate a uh, line of best fit for a data set that you have to linearize. So what does that mean to linearize? So uh, I am looking at the ice puck sliding lab from Pivot. And if I play this video, you can see the guy snips the thing and it slides. So it's accelerating this entire time. It's going about a meter, a little bit more than a meter. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this our position axis, axis X. We're going to measure time. And you can see I've got way more data here than I really need. So the first thing I want to do, though, is remind you of the kinematic expression you would typically use for position as a function of time, X equals x0, that's supposed to be an underscore, plus v0 times t, plus 1 half a t squared. But back in our video, I get to put the, the uh, meter stick, the measuring device, wherever I like. And I realize it's not quite lined up. That's close. So if we go back to the beginning of the video, I'm going to put it where I want 0 to be. And you can see here that the thing's not moving at the very first frame. So that means that I get to call x naught zero. So I don't even need that term. And I know in this particular case, since it wasn't moving when I started collecting data, that there's no v naught either. So that means the only expression I need to worry about is x equals 1 half a t squared. If t is on the horizontal axis and x is on the vertical axis, then this thing should look like a parabola. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add in some data. Now, typically, you would put your uh, variable that's going to go on the x-axis here and your variable on the y-axis here. But we're going to have to, to mess with things a little bit. So let's be careful. So I'm going to call this t, and I'm going to call that x. And then we're going to let's, since I have a lot of data here, I'm going to take every uh, the first five um, from 0.1 seconds and 0.2 and 0.3 and 0 0.4, 0 0.5, those. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Yeah, that'll do. So let's write down, oh, I zoomed in there. Let's write those positions, uh, those positions down at those times. 1.9 centimeters. And then 0 0.2 is uh, 7.1 centimeters. 7.1 centimeters. Check your work, y'all. And then 3.3 seconds is 16 centimeters. You can tell it's really speeding up. 0.4 is 29 centimeters. And 0.5 is 45 centimeters. So it's, it's really covered a lot of distance in that half a second. Okay. And um, by the way, you might want to make sure to set your x-axis to really zoom in on your data. You can see I'm, I set the negative uh, end over here at 0.2. We could even make it smaller and make it negative 0.1. And, um, you know, I don't even need to go all the way up to one on the uh, the end of this because the, the position, the time data, sorry, that's the, the horizontal axis is the time data. It doesn't even go up to uh, uh, one half. So I don't even need to go that far. So that's why you may need to, if you're doing this in a test situation, you may need to change what this is displayed on your x-axis to actually see the, the graph. Um, okay. So, the problem, though, is we need to linearize. So we want x to be on the y-axis, but we need to square our time, OK? So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to go back over here and put a caret to 2. And oh, hang on. I messed that up. Whoa. Uh, let's do it like this. And then instead of changing the variable, that's obviously going to confuse it. Good thing I did that, figure that out. So I'm coming over here and I'm putting a parenthesis and a caret and a two and I'm squaring the data. So I'm literally manually squaring my data. So there's my original time, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. And it still says T, even though this is T squared, but you can see this is now a line, okay? And if you want, you could even put maybe, I don't know, something to indicate that it's being squared. So here's how you do the linearization process. By the way, you can see now, look at that. It's it more or less is a line. The trick is to take the thing that's on your uh, vertical axis, which is x1, and set that equal to, but use the, the tilde instead of the equal sign. Set it equal to m times your vertical variable, I mean your horizontal variable, which is 
T1 in this case plus B. Okay. Now look, this is this says T1 right here, but it's really T squared. Okay. So what I'm really doing is I'm setting my uh, position approximately equal to, or doing a linear regression is, I guess, a better way to think about it. Slope times t squared plus b. You'll see that the the y-intercept after my regression is really, really, really small, but the slope has physical meaning, and I'll remind you of what that physical meaning is. I'm highlighting there one half a. So uh, just so we're clear, if this is now second squared and this is now centimeters, then this would be centimeters. Uh, and this would be second squared. So that means the um, the uh, intercept, no, I'm sorry, the slope, sorry, y'all. The slope must be in units of centimeters per second squared. So this slope right here, 180.294, that's almost the acceleration. Two times the slope, oops, that's supposed to be a two, not an S. Two times the slope literally is the acceleration. So, but the units are, uh, centimeters per second squared. So if you have forgotten, we typically use 10 um, meters per second squared for acceleration due to gravity. But if you are doing it in centimeters, it would be a thousand centimeters per second squared. So this is way less than a thousand. So you can see that at the, the angle for this particular trial, um, that this thing's not in free fall by any means, right? Oops. It's not in free fall by any means. The, the acceleration is going to be way less than that of gravity. And uh, what we've done here is we've asked Desmos to approximate what the data would show for the acceleration if we did this by linearizing the data. So I put in my position, I put in my times, but then afterwards I just went and squared them all so that I could do this line of best fit. And the slope is what I really care about. By the way, this R squared and R, these are uh, how viable the regression is and you could even if you really cared put your residuals in there which would be uh, uncertainty if you really wanted to include that but at any rate what i wanted to show is that by putting in the time and then squaring it in the position here let's get rid of that we don't want you anymore um we don't want to plot those by having the time squared and by having the position and by putting this uh tilde instead of the equal sign you're telling it to do a linear regression you get the slope automatically as far as the algorithm is concerned you get the y-intercept and you can see it really is close to zero uh so this would be three millimeter no this would be three uh tenths of a millimeter if this is in centimeters so that's really really small um, very close to zero. Certainly within uncertainty, you could even call the y-intercept zero and you would not be wrong. Look at the plot. It looks really close. Um, and you can see it really is a linear fit. The r squared and the r are very close to one. So this model holds very well. So this is a reasonable way to get the acceleration of 360.6 uh, centimeters per second squared. I hope you can replicate that. All right, good luck.